Coming up here on GMA, I've got my storm gear on in Southern California. Santa Monica Pier behind me, just drenched. We've got flood advisories, all the latest pictures from the Sierra, insane amounts of snow again. Uh, this is where, where real winter has been, but a real spring-like pattern for severe storms is setting up in the south. So Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, parts of Texas, gotta look out today, tomorrow, and then we'll move it into Georgia and beyond for the end of the week. I'll track that. And then we've got a story about, you know, your favorite coffee spot or restaurant, how they give you those rewards cards. Well, apparently they will be becoming less generous and there's a reason behind it. We'll tell you that reason. And we'll also give you some tips on what to do next. And finally, zero waste in your home. It's almost impossible to get to that point, but it would be great if all of us could. So I'm gonna bring you into our home and give you some of the tips and things that maybe you haven't yet heard about. Hopefully we'll save you some money and certainly going to change your ways without making you have to sacrifice. That and so much more right here on GMA. Coming up next hour, we continue to follow that fire at a near Northside apartment complex last night. Many residents had to be rescued. We'll have an update coming up. And Stephen is tracking traffic on this Wednesday, March 1st. Now at 6, San Antonio police are investigating an early morning shooting. Trina Weber is standing by with what led up to the violence. Plus, a three alarm fire at a San Antonio apartment complex ends up with two people in critical condition and many others had to be rescued. We had multiple rescues. When I say multiple, probably up to 15 to 20, where we put ladders up and took people off the balconies of these buildings. You see ladders all over this building. So our firefighters came in here tonight, put those ladders up, went up and made a lot of rescue. So very proud of the work that they did. The new details about what led up to the flames. And a train disaster in Greece. Dozens were killed, dozens more hurt. We're following in the latest on the situation there. Let's look out there with live cam. It's March 1st and we're starting humid at 70 degrees. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you, South Texas. Time to rise and shine. It is uh, Wednesday, March 1st. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good week so far. And now it's the beginning of March and yeah, a little humid out there. That's right. Mike Ostrange joins us now. There's a great weekend coming up, but yeah. between now and then, there's a lot going on in our weather department. Well, things have just been heating up and more humid. You know, Sunday was a, was a fantastic day and it's been, you know, more and more each and every day. Mm -hmm. And this morning, it is just sultry out there to say the least. Temperatures are above Above what the normal high is this time of year and it just kind of looks humid in that picture. We've had a little bit of some light rain picked up on radar. This is some uh, some clutter right in here and uh, yeah, there could be still a few little sprinkly showers left over in there, but most of it is just on the, the some mist, a couple of damp spots on the roads. That's about the extent of it this morning. We do have a little bit of fog, Kerrville, Uvalde, Hondo out there toward Rock Springs. Not bad, but just be on the lookout for this to, to thicken up as we go over the next couple of hours with all this humidity that just keeps getting pumped on in here from the Gulf of Mexico. Upper 60s, low 70s. Again, normal high is 70 in town right now. The normal low is mid 40s, 25 or so above normal, and just a bunch of allergens out there. The updated counts on that's going to be coming out later on this morning. Temperature is going to stay steady for the next couple of hours. A little bit of, you know, mist, drizzle, some patchy fog out there, and then we'll see some sunshine by noon. Already low 80s, and then we're going to make it up to 90 later on today. So basically just hot and humid. Tomorrow is going to start off pretty much identical. Very warm, very humid, mist drizzle, some, uh, some mist and fog out there. And then in the afternoon, we've got that big front moving on through here. Two things we're gonna have to be on the lookout for. We've been talking about the windy conditions, but also potential for some storms, maybe some strong to severe ones. More on that and more on the good looking weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on? You know, we've entered the 6 a.m. hour, Mike, uh, with some improvement on the slowdowns. We actually have been keeping a close eye on throughout the morning. Now, 35 at Wiener, you notice that traffic is actually moving, getting busier, but it beats the slowdown that we had been keeping a close eye on there in the northbound lanes. Southbound lanes definitely picking up, though. You could see that we do have some of those crews out there working to improve the roadways, but it looks like the job may be getting done now, and you can see now that slow 
slowdown that we talked about has improved. So green has taken over the area of 35 and really much of the map there. But keep on the lookout because we still have several road closures that will take place later that will likely impact your commute. But we'll get to that a little bit later on. Let's talk about those travel times because we are still in the green. If you're traveling in from Seguin along I-10 westbound 29 minutes to the Alamo City and it's the usual drive time from Lavernia. Our friends can expect about 33 minutes along 87 northbound and about 28 minutes if you're driving in from Floresville. But let's get it back here. 35 at Weedner. Yeah, you can see those crews are picking up the work there, but uh, we'll continue to watch 35 and all the other major highways and byways closely and give you your updates throughout the morning. Guys, thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say someone used a gun to end an argument in a west side neighborhood. That person shot and wounded two men. It happened on North San Ignacio near West Commerce. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, is there any update on the victims? Well, the only word we've had from police is that they both were in pretty bad shape and critical condition. Uh, just within the last five minutes or so, we did see a tow truck uh, come here, pick up a pickup that was in the driveway there and then leave with it. That somehow appears to be tied to the case. The police say this started with a gathering. Four men who were hanging out near a vacant home here in the 100 block of North San Ignacio. But at some point, things soured. They say that one man pulled out a gun and fired at the rest of the group, hitting those two victims. Again, the last word we had was that both were in critical condition. This happened just before 4 o'clock this morning. A detective since then have been going door to door to try to get some leads on the shooter. The only thing that we know from police is that that person took off in either a tan or a brown SUV. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, two people are in critical condition and several others are recovering from smoke inhalation after being rescued from their balconies during an apartment fire that's north of downtown. And that's according to the San Antonio Fire Department Chief Charles Hood. The call was reported in the 900 block of Wiesach at the Blanco Apartments complex last night. Hood says the fire started in a unit on the third floor. He says the cause is not known so far. However, investigators are still looking into it. The fire produced a lot of smoke that filled the building, forcing tenants to their balconies. As you can imagine, you're taking elderly folks down a ladder or they're being startled. We do have concerns for some of them, so we're continually evaluating them at this time. Chief Charles Hood says crews used a ladder to rescue a 98 year old woman along with 15 to 20 people on the second, third and fourth floors. A third alarm was called just in case there was a need for more staffing. The San Antonio Fire Department has worked all night to clear every room for carbon monoxide. Now they're working with the San Antonio Housing Authority to find somewhere for those affected to stay. Police are still looking for whoever's involved in what they believe is a home invasion. We're told a man was shot twice in the chest yesterday afternoon at an apartment complex off Jones Maltzberger Road. He was taken to a hospital and said to be doing okay. Police say a witness saw a, ba a bag being dropped off by a suspect on the way out. The officer we spoke with says the bank appeared to have drugs inside. So far, no arrests have been made. San Antonio police are investigating who fired nearly 70 bullets during a drive-by shooting near North Walters and Burnett. That's just east of downtown. The targets were two men in their 30s, and police say one man died and the other is in the hospital. Police say they don't know what the motive might have been, but it's clear that it was targeted. They say the two men were standing in front of the food mart when suspects in a white sedan pulled up and started shooting. One nearby resident asked to stay anonymous, but told us that a bullet hit her truck. That's when she and her child took cover. No, you can't have them be outside playing and you just always have to be a lookout. And once you hear something, you have to have that natural instinct to grab them. It's too close to home. It was literally so close that our living room walls were shaking. Now we asked San Antonio Police Chief William McManus about the shootings in the area. He says he's not sure any neighborhood is immune to the rise in crime, but he says risky behavior is usually to blame. Small cities that are in and around San Antonio are facing a rise in crime spilling from the city itself. Vehicle burglaries and thefts are at the top of the list of issues. Balcones Heights reports a 71% increase in vehicle burglaries from last year. Converse police report similar situations and is increasing traffic stops and a police presence. They say they're looking at a data showing what time crimes are committed as well as the areas that are seeing the most action. But police chiefs for both of those smaller cities say policing alone isn't going to stop the crime. We need to work with one another. 
policing will not strive and will not work without our residents in our community. We need everybody's support to be able to bring this, this down and, and throughout this metroplex of San Antonio. Now, police are stressing to lock your car every time you're not in it and take anything valuable with you. And now to a day of advocacy and a demand for change. Gun violence survivors and those supporting a change in gun laws met in Austin yesterday, all in hopes of changing the minds of lawmakers. They're calling for gun reform, including stronger red flag laws and raising the age to buy certain firearms. Several state lawmakers joined families from Uvalde and Santa Fe to rally outside the Capitol. A Rob Elementary teacher who was shot on May 24th shared his own plea for lawmakers with the crowd. I come here today to let the governor know that expanding guns into schools will not make it safer. <laughs> Teachers do not support this as an adequate solution to prevent gun violence. Those in attendance held meetings with lawmakers. Governor Greg Abbott was not included in those meetings, and we have contacted his office about the rally, but have yet to hear back. Top of your morning headlines to Europe now. Dozens of people are dead after a train crash in Greece. Two trains collided north of Athens, causing a massive fire. One was carrying hundreds of passengers. At least 32 people are confirmed dead. At least 80 others were hurt. Officials say at one point more than 150 firefighters and 40 ambulances responded. Emergency crews arrived to find debris scattered everywhere. Cranes had to be brought in to help move wreckage. Many of the passengers on the train were college students returning from a long weekend. The U.S. Supreme Court's conservative majority is questioning the legality of President Biden's plan to forgive $400 billion in federal student loans. Oral arguments were heard yesterday from cases challenging Biden's relief plan. The court's conservative justices are most concerned about the scope and scale of the administration's action, which was not specifically authorized by Congress. The three liberal justices relentlessly zeroed in on the legal standing of six GOP-led states suing the administration. Time right now, 611, 70 degrees. Still to come, the FAA is investigating another near miss, this time in Boston. We're now learning about the two jets that almost collided on the runway. Plus, Twitter making some big changes to its violent speech policy. We have details coming up in your morning consumer news. And let's look out there with live cam this Wednesday morning. A humid 70 degrees, but we are looking for things to be interesting tomorrow afternoon. We're going to check in with Mike later on. Welcome back at 6.15 to your morning consumer news. As Twitter's cracking down on violent speech, the company's new policy is banning any posts that contain threats and incitements of violence. Any accounts tweeting violent speech will be suspended. Less severe violations will require users to delete said tweets before they're able to access their account again. A cybersecurity breach at Dish Network. The satellite provider says a breach knocked out its website call centers and internal communications last week. DISH says it's still looking into whether customers' personal information was compromised. And Google just rolled out a new safety feature to its Pixel Watch. It will call for help after sensing a hard fall. If a fall is detected, the watch will first ask if the owner needs help, then call 911 and share their location if the user does not respond. 616. Been a little while since we talked to Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, let's go ahead and check back with yeah. Stephen. Hey guys. Hi. Hi. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning and good morning <coughs> to you at home. Just sending you a nice friendly wave here. And guess what? We have a good update. 35 at Weed near things are moving a lot better than what we saw earlier. Now remember the big headline of the morning has been a lot of these road closures along the northeast side, 410 included, but uh, looks like the work has wrapped up an hour later. So not good news for those who had to travel earlier in the morning, but if you do have to head along 35, maybe 4 10 on the northeast side, you're in luck. Just a little bit more traffic out in that direction. But take a look at the map, and this is really what we can expect right now, guys. Plenty of green out there, but still plenty of road work. Now that we have begun a new month, uh, let's take a look at what's going to take place here along Loop 1604 on the northeast side of San Antonio. Now, I mentioned this earlier in the week, but demolition work will begin and take us all the way to the end of the month, March 27th. So this is a long-term closure. What we're going to see out there are the westbound and eastbound Loop 16 around 1604 for turnaround closures right there at Lookout Road. And again, that is for demolition work. But if you want to stay up to date, know before you go, scan the QR code that's on the screen, and that will take you
take you to our KSAT traffic page and I highly encourage you scan that QR code so you know what to expect, whether it is in the morning commute, the overnight commute or the early, early commute. Again, know before you go. Thank you, Stephen. Let's roll that school bus with Mike Osterhage. Yes. Yeah, as you're uh, heading out and hitting the roads this morning, driving the bus, driving your car, whatever the case may be, watch out for a couple of damp spots on the roads. We do have a little bit of uh, some fog, not too thick out there, but just those sprinkles. You said you were, had some mist on the windshield earlier this morning. But that was way up in you know, the hills of, of Stone Oak. Right, <laughs> but we <laughs> had a couple of sprinkles that moved through. Nothing showing up on radar right now. And then it's going to be a hot afternoon today, hot and humid. And that's going to be the situation tomorrow as well. All right, take a look at this picture. First of all, it reminds me that you should have had the, it's the dress you had on the other day. Oh, right? you would have matched yeah, perfectly. That exact same Deep color. Yes. Dress, but notice that. what the caption says. Yes, the, what is that, hibiscus is definitely in. Azaleas. Azaleas, pardon yes, me. Oh, nice. In bloom. Hopefully it's still around Thursday. Uh, on Thursday night right? with maybe, the wind coming on through think here. Those blooms will blow away. Yeah, I, I really, everything, anything that's outside, Put it inside for tomorrow night into Friday. It's going to be that windy around the area. All right, it's kind of murky looking out there as of right now. And notice the road does appear to be a little bit damp. A couple of sprinkles that have moved on through. Like I said, nothing is showing up on radar right now, but that doesn't mean there's not some mist out there, that very fine mist. Visibility, Kerrville, four miles, five Uvalde, six New Braunfels, so not anything, just pea soup out there. Uh, three miles visibility, Rock Springs. Just be on the lookout for the next couple of hours, and it's all this moisture that just continues to get pumped on in here, helping out with the fog, helping out with some of that mist and drizzle, and temperatures are going to stay steady the next couple of hours. Then we are going to make it into the low 80s at noon. We're already above the normal high temperature by 25 normal low temperature pardon me by 25 degrees and above the normal high right now and then we just continue up from there so we'll be basically 20 above normal later on today getting up to 90 with some sunshine out there now jump into tomorrow stays humid now through tomorrow morning same situation mist drizzle fog then in the afternoon here comes that front it's going to move through dinner time early evening Dew points drop off, humidity drops like a rock out there, and windy, windy conditions, and that's what's prompting that high fire danger. And we're going to be seeing today compared to yesterday, say out in Rock Springs, dew points up about 50 degrees. That's going to be the opposite then by Friday morning. We'll see 30, 40, 50 degree drops in the, the dew point temperatures compared to what it will be tomorrow morning. Now, as the front also moves on through, it is going to start to touch off some showers and a few thunderstorms around here. The timing of it is really dependent upon how strong these may get. Comes through a little bit sooner. They start to develop in the afternoon. The peak heating of the day, they'll start to get a little stronger. They wait a little bit. Obviously, it won't be quite as strong, but we'll have some of those right around dinner time tomorrow night and then moving off to the east. Obviously, to the east is where the majority of those stronger storms are going to be. The potential is there. Storm Prediction Center actually moved this lighter shade of pink further out to the west and expanded it there for just a couple of isolated uh, potentially strong storms. Most of those are going to be further off to the north and east. And also we've got the fire weather watch that goes into effect at noon tomorrow up until three in the morning Friday gust to 50 miles per hour. Like I said, anything outdoors, if you want to keep it, put it inside tomorrow night, early Friday, 83 at noon, mostly cloudy skies, high temperature then today. Makes it up to 90. Very humid out there. Tomorrow we start off identical basically to what we are right now. Mist, drizzle, a little bit of fog here and there. And it stays that way throughout the afternoon. The front starts to work through. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms will develop in the hill country late in the afternoon. Move on through most of the heavy stuff, which could be severe. High winds. Little hail, an isolated tornado off to the east. Can't be completely ruled out, but not likely at all. But windy. And again, those gusts of 50 miles per hour. Beautiful then and behind that Friday afternoon and the first part of the weekend. Yeah, about time to start thinking about uh, having uh, better awareness of potential severe weather in yes, our we part of the state. Now that we are into meteorological spring, yep. yes, indeed. We'll watch out for it. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 621, 70 degrees. The Spurs' 16-game losing streak came to an end last night. Woohoo! We're going to have your highlights in just a bit. When you have chronic kidney disease, there are places you'd like to be, like here, and here, and here. Not so much here. If you've been diagnosed with chronic kidney disease, Farsiga reduces the risk of kidney failure, which can lead to dialysis. 
Farsiga can cause serious side effects, including dehydration, urinary tract or genital yeast infections in women and men, and low blood sugar. Ketoacidosis is a serious side effect that may lead to death. A rare, life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Farsiga and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this bacterial infection, an allergic reaction, or ketoacidosis. And don't take it if you are on dialysis. Put yourself in the driver's seat. Make an appointment to ask your doctor for Farsiga for chronic kidney disease. If you can't afford your medication, AstraZeneca may be able to help. In this morning's GMA First Look, another near miss on the runway. According to the FAA, air traffic control telling a Learjet pilot to wait before taking off because a JetBlue plane was landing on an intersecting runway. It'll land four right, JetBlue 206. But even after acknowledging the message, the FAA says the Learjet pilot took off anyway, forcing the JetBlue plane to go from 87 feet to 3,900 and then hitting the ground and then going back up within seconds like you definitely got a jolt and then nobody knew what was going on the jet blue flight landing safely but it's one of at least five close calls in recent months that abc news has learned of the faa facing questions about airline safety after incidents like these and coming up at 7 a.m aviation expert steve ganyard weighs in live with your gma first look i'm Gio benitez abc news new york we have fantastic news this morning. The Silver and Black have a lot to celebrate today. Spurs broke their 16-game losing streak in Utah last night. Also wrapped up the rodeo road trip. In the end, Kelton Johnson led the guys with 25 points, four rebounds, and three assists. San Antonio beats Utah 102 to 94. A huge win. Spurs are now 15 and 47 on the season. Well, next, the Spurs will come back home to host the Pacers tomorrow night at 730 in the friendly confines of the AT&T Center. Great job, guys. Yeah, go Spurs, go. Time 626 and 70 degrees for now. Before we head to break, just a reminder to check out the newest Texas Crime Stories podcast, Iconic Village Fire. Now, nearly five years after a fire destroyed a San Marcos apartment complex, police still have not caught who did this. Hosts Eric Hernandez and Lee Waldman investigate the tragedy, and you can check it out online at KSAT.com or on our YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. If your travels take you on Loop 410 and New Braunfels, you're going to meet a whole bunch of new friends today. A lot of traffic out there right now and flashing lights. We'll get an update on the situation with Stephen Cavazos coming up. Outside with live cam, pretty tranquil weather now, but Mike says plan ahead for later this week. Extraordinarily gusty winds and high fire danger will be uh, prevailing over parts of South Texas. And welcome back. It is Wednesday, an easy to remember day. It's a brand new month, March 1st. That's right. Happy March. Happy Wednesday and prepare for the crazy weather tomorrow. When do these gusty winds start to show up, Mike? Tomorrow, well, in the hill country, late afternoon tomorrow, uh, as the front starts to work its way on through. Of course, we've got the fire weather watch that goes into effect at noon. We're going to show you that in just a second. But uh, yeah, tomorrow afternoon is really, and then into the evening hours, not only those high winds, but also we are going to be dealing with some uh, Yes, good news that we're getting some rain tomorrow. Bad news is some of those storms could be on the, the stronger side. Again, more on that in a second. It's kind of murky out there. Looking at that, we've got some, well, looks like uh, emergency vehicles or something on the highway as of right now. We're there by 410. Stephen's going to have more on that. But the roads are fairly dry. We've had a little bit of uh, some sprinkles, a little bit of mist out there this morning. 71 degrees. We are above the normal high temperature right now. 67 dew point, which means there's a ton of humidity out there. It will almost slapping the face when you walk outside this morning. Hints of fog, hints of reduced visibility. Uh, the lowest visibility is out there in Rock Springs right now. A lot of uh, just a little bit of fog out there toward a lot of areas covered with a little bit of fog around much of the area, especially down to the southwest. Mid upper 60s, low 70s, way above normal right now. We should be in the mid to upper 40s as of for a low temperature right now. Mold and uh, ash are on the low side as our oak, hackberry, elm update account is going to come out in about an hour or so. A little bit of patchy fog, mist, sprinkle out there. Very warm, very humid, hot and humid later on today. Same thing starting off tomorrow. Then that front moves through late in the afternoon here in town right around dinner time. And we will have a few showers and thunderstorms developing along that front. And 
there is the potential some of those could be on the strong to severe side, primarily off to the east. Then it is going to be extremely windy tomorrow night into early Friday morning. Then in behind that, we got a beautiful Friday, beautiful Saturday, overall nice looking weekend. Just got to make it through tomorrow first. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on on the highways? Well, uh, you saw those flashing lights out there, Mike, and in fact, we showed a shot from 410 as we went to commercial break. Big backups uh, that were reported out there a little bit earlier, but remember, that has largely been due to the construction that we've been seeing take place out there. In fact, uh, the pickup process is still well underway, but it does look like we have some minor improvements along 410, both uh, east and westbound. As you can see, that traffic is moving without any big trouble out there, but those flashing lights off in the distance and if you take a close look we do have barriers also placed along the access road so you have to watch out because they could be picking all of that up right now as the commute really does start to get rolling here getting into the map thankfully there is not a lot to talk about here no incidents to report just yet uh, no major slowdowns either in fact a lot of that took place in the early hour of GMSA during 5 a.m. but we are already starting to see a little bit of a buildup right there along six uh, US 90 as you approach 1604 that's over on the west side and I'll tell you what that's always expected this early in the morning as well as 35 southbound. So if your commute is about to get started, I would say right now is a perfect time to head out on the on the roadways. But watch out here at 410 at New Braunfels because we still have those crews out there uh, picking up a little bit of what they were working on overnight. So again, the commute is starting to get rolling here. We're going to we're going to continue to watch things. We'll give you updates throughout the morning, guys. Thank you, Stephen. A gathering of four men in a west side neighborhood has ended with two of them in the hospital. Yeah, that's right. San Antonio police say those men were shot when the meetup turned into an argument. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened on North San Ignacio near West Commerce. And Katrina, what is next in the investigation? Well, I'm sure police will want to talk to those two victims if and when they're able. Then they also have the other person who was here who was not shot, and police are still trying to track down the shooter. Well, they wrapped up their work here in the 100 block of North, North San Ignacio about a half hour ago. Earlier, police had this whole area roped off as they searched for evidence. They say the four men had been hanging out near a vacant house, and at some point before four this morning, they got involved in an argument. Police say one man pulled out a gun and fired at the others, wounding two of them. The last word that we had from police on those victims is that both of them were pretty bad, pretty bad off. They were in critical condition. And they say the last that anyone saw of the shooter, he was in a tan or brown SUV. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Investigators are hoping you can help them track down a murder suspect. The victim, Robert Hurley, was found stabbed to death last month. His body was discovered outside of the Sorrento Apartments on Fredericksburg Road. You can call Crime Stoppers if you have any information on this case. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. Now to the courtroom where jury deliberations could begin today in the trial of a deadly shooting in a Westside motel parking lot. Leopoldo Mora is accused of killing Kenneth Salazar in 2021. Yesterday there was testimony from the lead detective in the case, Detective Mark Korn, on the stand to discuss the investigation. He says the surveillance footage was key. It found guilty Mora is facing up to life in prison. Some other stories we are following this morning. Your electricity bills are going up. CPS Energy last raised its rates last March. That's when the company raised the base rate by just under 4%. We are expecting prices to increase next year. Right now, it's not clear by how much. That's what our teams are doing here in the spring and summer is sharpening our pencil and being able to have that discussion later in the year. Now, last year's base rate hike was to pay for staffing, technology improvements, and infrastructure. They say those reasons could also explain next year's planned increase. We are learning more about the city's plans to rebuild a pedestrian bridge over on Castroville Road. Last week, a truck crashed into the bridge and it collapsed. City Public Works says it's working on a schedule for design and construction for the bridge within the next few weeks. Right now, it's setting up a temporary pedestrian crossing at Castroville Road and Dahlgreen Avenue. That should be up by the middle of this month. 
And happening tonight, a big party at St. Philip's College celebrating its 125th anniversary. Now, the school was found back in 1989 as a historically black and Hispanic serving college. The anniversary celebration starts at 6 p.m. Special guests there will also be there. There's also going to be a fireworks show. Happy anniversary, St. Philip's. Right now, 637, 70 degrees. And coming up, we're going to tell you the best ways to give your unwanted clothing a new home. 640, welcome back. Of course, it's Wednesday, March 1st. Spring cleaning may be on your mind, but what should you do with all those unwanted clothes? We know donations can make a difference and help the environment with fewer clothing ending up in landfills, but sometimes unwanted clothes are poor conditions or access to certain donation centers can be difficult. ABC's Melissa Adan gets to the heart of it. Inside the Los Angeles Mission Warehouse, people like Christopher Taylor are hard at work making sure donated clothing find a new home, a cause deeply personal. Once I was one of them out there. Six years ago, Christopher found himself accepting the services of the LA Mission, and he learned how a shirt or a pair of shoes can go a long way. If I want to give clothing, what's the best advice? The only thing that we encourage is dignity. So when you're thinking about what to give, um, think about what you would like to receive. Other tips from organizers at the LA Mission include sorting through the items you will donate and bagging or tagging them accordingly. If the clothing has holes or is tattered, consider bringing it to a textile recycling center or program in your neighborhood. We have a partner that we use that um, kind of rags items and like uses it for textile recycling and so nothing really gets wasted. Here at the LA Mission, they receive thousands of pieces of clothing just weekly and a consistent need are actually warm clothing like jackets and sweaters. Underneath each garment is a story, tales that Victor Lozano gets to experience. There are times when I help somebody with clothes, they come at the last minute, hey, I got an interview tomorrow and I've helped them and like Weeks later, they're like, do you remember? Do you remember me? You gave me that shirt. You gave me that tie. I got the job. So that's like, wow. As those who work here have a full circle moment. I always walk past the mission, but I never thought I would be a part of the mission. All thanks to one simple donation. Melissa Don, ABC News, Los Angeles. 642, 70 degrees. Go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cabasas. Well, if you plan on waking up, heading out the door to maybe grab a cup of coffee, the uh, slowdowns can be expected. So just pack your patience this morning. 37 at 410, not a bad shot, but US 90. Surprised that shot's not picked up yet with traffic, but other areas are really starting to see a lot more folks out there on the roadway. We are at the start of morning rush, so we can expect to see a lot more activity out there and a lot more red take over the screen, which is what we're already starting to see in those usual hot spots. But be on the lookout out if you are an overnight traveler because this is going to continue 410 on the northeast side of San Antonio. This has really been the big problem spot over the last two mornings. Saturday, March 4th is when it should wrap up. But remember, this is overnight 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. That's when we see the multiple left lane closures along Loop 410 eastbound. And again, that's from Nacogdoches Road to Harry Wurzbach Road. But you can always head over to KSAT.com slash traffic, which I highly encourage you do. So that way you can plan ahead of time. Know before you go. And right now it looks like slowdowns will be the main headline of the morning as we approach the 7 a.m. hour. Fantastic. Thank mm -hmm. you, Stephen. One of our viewers, Tiffany Moore Mezzo, just wrote, Happy Wednesday on Facebook. Tell Steph she looks so pretty in her red. Aww, Steph, you look so you. pretty in your red. Thank you so Perfect. much. And you look very <laughs> dapper in your purple. Mike, you look pretty in your red, too. We yeah. kind of match yeah, today. Yeah, we do. Oh, and then your pocket square. It matches your shoes. It matches your, yeah, she's got well, this. It works, too. Well. We're just the mutual apparition and, society here. <laughs> and if I may add to that, she always looks gorgeous. She, she does. does. She's so kind. It's the rose among the thorns right here. That so. is very true. Aww. Okay, take a look outside right now. And, uh, you know, Steve was talking about the roads. Watch out for a few damp spots here and there. We've had a little bit of mist, a couple of sprinkles and so forth. We have a waxing gibbous moon right now. And, wow, what a beautiful picture, Oscar. Thank you very much for that. Sure can see all those craters on the moon. It's a great shot. Love that. All right, it's starting to lighten up a little bit, but notice how it's just kind of murky looking off there in the background. And we've got a slight bit of reduced visibility. Not bad. A little thicker fog out there in Rock Springs, but again, nothing too pea soup out there as a
day steady this morning. Upper 60s, low 70s. We are at the normal high temperature right now, and then we'll make it up into the low 80s at noon. More sunshine later on today mixed in with the clouds. Not going to be completely sunny by any stretch. And then we top off at 90 later on today. So we'll be just about 20 degrees above normal. Very, very humid out there as well. That's going to remain the case this afternoon, overnight and tomorrow morning. So we'll start off tomorrow like this morning. Then by the afternoon, we are going to be seeing that front move on through here. So by evening hours, the front comes through. It's going to be here in town right around dinner time. Obviously, sooner in the hill country, bone dry air moves on in here and very windy conditions. And given the fact that we haven't had really any any rain in forever, it seems like that's what's prompting that high fire danger out there in the western half of our area. Also, as the front approaches tomorrow afternoon, we're going to start to see a couple of showers here and there. Not anything drought breaking, but yeah, there will be a couple of decent nabors here and there, even a few thunderstorms, and that's going to be dinner time as well. Moving on through, then things really start to get going, especially off to the east. Now, some of those may be strong, potentially severe, but the majority of that would be again further off to the east. We'll have to be on the lookout here in town, although rain chances themselves are not overly great. Yeah, if anything does pop, could become strong. But the big, big story is going to be those winds gusting to 50 miles per hour. So the fire weather watch goes into effect tomorrow at noon up until 3 o'clock in the morning on Friday morning. And then in behind that, yeah, we'll finally get down not close to normal, really. We'll still be just in the 70s, but a lot lower than the next couple of days. Then it's back to the 80s starting off the first part of next week. Low temperatures will finally get down to close to normal readings Friday, Saturday mornings just about Sunday and then back to very mild conditions starting off the first part of next week. So the forecast today, what you see is what you get this morning. It's cloudy, it's warm, it's humid, a little bit of mist out there, 83 at noon and then a high temperature up to 90 with some sunshine mixed in with the clouds, very humid. We start off tomorrow just like today and then in the afternoon, a couple of those showers start to develop in the hill country as the front moves on through very windy conditions in behind. Again, we'll be on the lookout for some of those storms to become potentially strong tomorrow afternoon, but that fire weather watch overnight tomorrow into early Friday. Anything outside you don't want to lose, bring it inside in the overnight hours tomorrow. And then nice weather Friday, Saturday, and most of Sunday. I have some small plants. I better bring them in. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I mean, even, you know, say the, the flag on your on, on the flagpole, bring that in too. So it's going to be windy. We'll be prepared. Thanks, Mike. 647, 70 degrees. And are you doing a good job at work? Well, tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you how to get on your boss's good side without being a fake. Outside with live cam on this Wednesday morning, looking at San Antonio International Airport, you're watching GMSA. This morning, the death toll rising after a passenger train collided with an oncoming freight train in northern Greece. Emergency crews arriving to find debris scattered everywhere, train cars toppled over and derailed, a mangled mess of metal, some parts unrecognizable. Officials say at one point more than 150 firefighters and 40 ambulances responded, nearby towns assisting. Hellenic Train Company says about 350 people were aboard the passenger train that departed from Athens, adding firefighters and Hellenic Train personnel rushed to the scene, participating in rescue operations and providing assistance. Dozens of victims were taken to hospitals, some with serious injuries, but officials say the severity of the collision has made it extremely difficult to free people trapped. Cranes were brought in to help move the wreckage. Many of the passengers on the train were college students returning from a long weekend. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. Squarely in the hands of the Supreme Court. For more than three hours Tuesday, the conservative justices casting doubt on whether President Biden has the legal authority to wipe nearly half a trillion dollars in federal student loans with just a stroke of his pen. I think most casual observers would say if you're going to give up that much amount of money, if you're going to affect the obligations of that many Americans on a subject that's of great controversy, they would think that's something for Congress to act on. Critics calling the plan a scam, an unfair giveaway that would overlook some Americans like those who already paid back their loans. And there are the indirect costs, like the fact that the president's student loan giveaway is likely to prolong 
our current inflation crisis. According to the White House, 26 million people already applied for relief and 16 million were approved before the two legal challenges halted the program. You go to school to get a well-paying job, but you're also digging yourself a hole of enormous debt, and it's hard to crawl out of. Justice Amy Coney Barrett and the three liberal justices zeroing in on the legal standing of six GOP-led states suing the Biden administration, suggesting none would suffer direct harm. Usually we don't allow one person to step into another's shoes and say, I think that that person suffered a harm, even if the harm is very great. Protesters gathered outside the court as the conservative majority now appears poised to crush the loan forgiveness plan. And White House sources tell ABC News that they are confident they can win this case. A decision is expected by the end of June, and right now the White House insists there is no plan B if they were to lose this case. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And today on GMSA at 9, it's a new science with Sarah, our Sarah Spivey, and our David <laughs> Sears. We'll be doing an experiment with students at St. Thomas More School on the northeast side. So tune in for more. And that, and today on GMSA w at 9. What's funnier, Sarah's look on her face, the scheming mad scientist, mm -hmm. or, or David? how serious David is in the background, <laughs> as if he's actually paying attention to what's in that bottle. I'm sure he's paying attention. I don't know. <laughs> it's Close attention. Great. It is pure. Pure KSAT excellence yeah. for sure. 654 on your Wednesday morning, folks. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, we know the kids are going to love them. Yeah. All right. Let's get one <laughs> last look at the commute here. 410 at New Brunfels. Really, uh, the big issue throughout the morning has been slowdowns, uh, but that has quickly improved. But we are starting to see a lot more traffic out there. US 90 at Leon Creek. You can see a little bit more of it, but really uh, no issues to report that would have caused even bigger slowdowns. Uh, right now at this time, no, not seeing any crashes reported by text up, but definitely seen a lot of red out there. You can see more of it building up in the usual hot spots. Again, US 90 eastbound as you make your way in from Castorville, 35 southbound. So let's just take a look at some of those travel times because if you are traveling in from New Braunfels, it should take you roughly 40 minutes. We're almost in the red there. So just pack some patience and about a 33 minute drive time if you're heading in from 281 southbound from Bulverde. So just drive safe out there. We're going to track the roadways throughout Good Morning America. All right, here's this picture live came over there by the airport. If you look off in the distance, not only can you see a plane takeoff, but it does look like it's gotten slightly murkier out there. Case in point, visibility has dropped to six miles. Now it's not, you know, pea soup or anything like that, but it's also dropped down to two miles in New Braunfels. So be on the lookout for more of this fog as the morning rolls on. Very, very warm and humid out there. We're at our normal high temperature right now. And then later on today, we're going to make it up into the upper 80s, low 90s, a lot of 90s again along the Rio Grande Valley. Tomorrow we start off same way. There's some mist and drizzle. We've had some mist and drizzle, maybe some damp spots on the road. Same thing tomorrow morning. That big front moves through then tomorrow late in the afternoon. Some showers and thunderstorms are going to develop in the hill country, just a few of them. But the, really the big story is going to be the wind. You know, we have to be on the lookout for a stronger storm, but the windy conditions and the fire weather watch Thursday overnight into early Friday. And again, we welcome our Spurs back home after the rodeo road yes. trip and a huge win in Utah against the Jazz. Yeah, welcome back. Go Spurs, go. <laughs> we'll see you all at night.